next step is we are going to create rest endpoints so first we're going to create create employee rest api to save a data into employees table so for that first we're gonna you know implement a service layer because controller layer is depends on service layer so go ahead and first create interface and classes in service layer so go to service.impl package here right click on it new and then choose interface and look at here we are going to create this service i mean the interface that is employee interface inside service package so just remove here dot impl okay and uh, just give interface name as employee service so make sure that you create this employee service interface inside spring boot dot service package hit finish now you can see here employee service interface is created within a service package so now we are going to create a class which implements employee service interface inside service.impl package so right click on this package new and then choose class and let's give class name as employee service impl so this is a naming convention we typically use to you know provide a service class name so it, it means that the employee service impl is a class which implements the employee service interface so impl stands for implementation okay and now we want to implement the employee service interface and whenever you create a service class then make sure that you will add at service annotation okay make sure that you choose add service annotation from org dot spring framework dot stereotyped out service package all right now our service layer is ready okay now what we need to do is we want to define one method that is save employee method and the return type of this method is employee and the name of the method is save employee and the argument we're going to pass is employee object now we have defined you know the method in employee service interface now we are going to implement this method in employee service IMPL class so go ahead and click on add unimplemented methods okay so before implementing this method we need to inject the dependency right that is employee repository dependency so basically there are two types of dependency injection one is setter based dependency injection and another is constructor based dependency injection so always remember uh, you use constructor based dependency dependency injection whenever you have a mandatory parameters and use setter based dependency injection whenever you have optional parameters so now in our case we're gonna you know use employee repository as a mandatory so we're gonna use constructor based dependency injection so just create private employee repository object here employee repository and as we are using constructor based dependency injection so right click source and generate constructor and one more important thing is we don't have to again add add auto add annotation because whenever spring uh, you know spring finds spring bean it has only one you know constructor then by default spring uh, you know will configure this dependency automatically we don't have to you know add add or to add annotation for this constructor here because whenever we have spring bean it has only one constructor then spring boot will automatically you know auto wire this dependency we don't have to add at auto add annotation so remember these uh, uh, things or note down just note down these things these things are really matters okay so three important things are just note down these points you don't have to add add repository annotation uh, for this employee repository uh, interface because spring data jp already take care by adding add repository annotation this is the first important point second point is you don't have to add add transaction annotation here because spring data jp internally 
you know provides uh, you know a transaction to all its methods all right and uh, the third important is we don't have to add at a toy annotation to this constructor because whenever spring boot finds spring bean it has only one constructor then spring boot will automatically auto wire this dependency okay great now next is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to simply use employee repository and its method called save and we're going to save the employee instance to the database so this completes our service layer changes for save employee or create employee rest api now what we're going to do is we're going to create a rest api and controller layer so go ahead and uh, right click on controller package new and then choose class and here we're going to provide a class name as employee controller and let's annotate this controller class with at rest controller annotation so you can also use at controller annotation but uh, in case of add controller annotation you have to use add response body annotation you know on top of each and every rest api that we define inside this controller so in order to simplify that spring has provided add rest controller annotation and this annotation internally uses add controller annotation as well as add response body annotation well now we are going to inject the dependency that is employee service So as as mentioned uh, earlier, like we are going to use constructor based dependency injection. So right click here, source and then generate constructor using fields. Okay, and let me write the comment here. Build create employee REST API. Okay, just uh, you know create a method here. Method name is public, and the return type of the method is a response a response entity okay so i will tell you why i'm using response entity as a response type here I'm, and uh, this is a generic class so i want to pass employee object okay and just give method name as save employee all right so why i'm using response entity class because we can provide you know complete response details in this class for example we can add a status to this class header you know etc so that's why i'm using response entity class here to you know generate a response for this rest api okay now let's go and let's annotate this method with at post mapping annotation so here uh, we are using at post mapping annotation because this rest api should handle post http request now here we want to pass the employee object because this post request contains a employee json object right and that we need to bind to the java object that is employee object for that we are going to use annotation called a request body annotation request body annotation now we need to return this object right that is response entity so just return new response entity and here we are going to use this response entity overloaded class so look at here there are overloaded constructor for a response entity class right we are going to use third one because we need to pass the body and the status so body is employee object so we are going to just call a save employee method and we just pass the employee object and here we again second parameter we need to pass the status right so in this case the http status is created so this rest api will create the resource that's the reason we are going to pass http status as created and i add here add request mapping annotation and i want to provide the 
base url for this controller that is api slash employees so we can define this employees uh, you know uh, url here as well but uh, in order to you know uh, maintain this employees url in a common place so i'm gonna add here in a base url itself okay i just remove this okay just save this file and uh, now we are going to run our spring boot application and test this rest api using postman rest client so go ahead and run our spring boot application now right click run as spring boot application So make sure that you have installed Postman REST client because we are going to use Postman REST client to test the REST APIs. Well, our Spring Boot application is up and running. So let's head over to Postman REST client. Okay, and uh, just type the URL: http local host followed by the port 8080 slash api slash employee. So this is our REST endpoint URL and we are going to test you know post REST API that is save employee REST API for that we need to pass the JSON in a request body right for that uh, we, need to, we need to you know choose uh, the HTTP method that is post because we are sending post request and uh, go to the body we are going to define a JSON here inside a body so go to body and then choose raw here and here we are going to create a json so first name let's say ramesh and last name fadatari and email ramesh at the rate gmail.com and make sure that you choose content type json here all right so once you configured everything successfully so look at here this is the syntax error or oh, comma is missing okay once you configured everything then go ahead and click on send and there we go so employee is successfully inserted in database and we got a success response from the rest api with status code 201 created and this is the response and id here so id equal to one so this is the auto generated primary key value and let's head over to the mysql workbench and if you can see a record is inserted in a database table all right guys we have successfully implemented same employee rest api